everyone and you know thanks for um, joining us in for this talk today. Um, I'm Dixon, I'm currently um, a final year student in NUS uh, doing computer science and um, we have, oh, sorry. And um, so um, we was, so um, there's, and we also have, um, uh, along with me today is also uh, Ken Chua. He is uh, the uh, founder of these abilities, and we are sort of working together on a um, web accessibility initiative here in Southeast Asia. And also today, um, unfortunately, he couldn't join us. Is uh, Gyang from Grab, so he is um, Grab's first blind coder. So um, let me just start off by talking about what is A11Y or so A11Y you know, stands for, it's an acronym for accessibility that is meant to fit into uh, four characters. So it's meant to fit in more easily into a tweet. And it's used pretty widely in the accessibility community. So um, I'm also pretty active on Twitter as well. So accessibility, like simply put, it's the um, practice of making your product or service as usable by as many people as possible. So in the context of a website, it could be ensuring that it works well for, let's say, someone who is visually impaired using a screen reader software, which I will soon um, demonstrate, or someone using, or ensuring that it is responsively designed for someone using screen magnification or someone using a mobile device. So to give you a better sense of what this is, um, I'll, I'll sort of demonstrate how I would use a screen reader to access a particular, to um, look up information on JavaScript's uh, map function. So a screen reader is um, a software that reads out the contents of the screen. So let me just demonstrate by... NVDA menu, view log, speech view rest. NV yep. Google Dash. Yeah. Google Document. So this is um, what right now what I, I, I want to do is Link. to uh, use Google to search for information on a, on JavaScript's map function and uh, to at the sort of bottom right is a printed transcript of what it's speaking. So this is roughly what it sounds like, and it provides um, keystrokes that I can efficiently use to move to various structural elements of the page. So in this case, I want to move immediately to the search box. Search landmark, search combo box, collapse as autocomplete editable. And then I can just start typing. J A V A S C R I P T S P A P S P A U C O N. JavaScript map function dash yep. Google search busy so button it's, collapse uh, it's Google started apps, talking because search landmark, link it's, traffic. It started talking because uh, the page has finished loading. So what I typically do for uh, increase like productivity is to uh, listen to it at, a, at, at sort of a faster uh, rate. So this is sort of possible because it uses a synthesized voice. So you can get used to how it uh, pronounces certain sentences or phrases or words. Right. So here I am at the top of the page, and here I know that uh, Google uses third-level headings to uh, sort of. It uses third head level headings as titles of each search result. So I can immediately go to the first uh, third level heading that I find. Right. So let's say I, I can also move to the next one. Right. So I'm a fan of um, MDN, so I'm just going to go into this page. And let's see if this. Ah, okay. Right. So it's uh, it's finished loading, and I can. So what I typically do on an unfamiliar web page is to try to move to the first uh, heading that I find. So in this case, uh, I am here on the main title of the page. So I can go down and start reading about how this works. Yep. So this is the syntax of the map function, and I can also sort of move slower using sort of uh, moving by word, you know, because sometimes the parameters can be a bit more com complex. So this is like roughly, you know, how 
a screen reader uh, works. So I hope that this gives you a, a better idea of how a screen reader user would perceive or use your website. Right. So let's let me move to Right. So why is you know accessibility important? So imagine you know in your you know everyday life, uh, you know not having you know convenient or easy access to information that you need, or not being able to you know perform at, uh, at some activities for your daily life. So some sort of examples for myself could be you know. Um, not being able to conveniently use an iBanking website because it doesn't sort of uh, work well or doesn't use good HTML. So I actually personally experienced this uh, problem on one of the local banking websites. You know, for some other examples you know, would be um, not having sort of convenient access to integrated development env environments, which really I would love to use them. Uh, because it really improves your pro your productivity, but it doesn't work well with a, sc a screen reader typically. Um, as well as you know, not being able, or as well as perhaps you know, booking an Uber or a Grab. So some of these uh, act activities I find more challenging than others. But but I'm you know as sort of we have a greater like mainstream awareness of how. Um, people would use your various products and, and services, I, I do see this changing. So one thing is that when I'm using a new product or, or service, especially if you are using some alternative interface to access, to access it, whether it sort of works for you is something that okay. is uh, foremost in your mind. So I would like to pass on the remaining uh, time to Ken. Yep. Thanks. Um, okay, so you can just yeah. Hi everyone, so my name is Ken. Um, can we give Nixon a round of applause for the demo? <clears throat> All right. So I, I just wanted a quick poll at the same time. Um, can, you show, can I have a show of hands um, who saw a screen reader um, you know, in the flesh for the first time? All right, keep your hands there. Um, who knows, um, for those who know what um, A11Y or web accessibility is, keep your hands raised, the rest put it down. All right, sorry, the light's too bright. Okay, <clears throat> and then keep your hands up um, only if you've worked on a web accessibility project yourself before. All right, so that's only a really, really small handful. I've got to speak to you guys as well. Um, <clears throat> close it. Okay. All right. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so. Um, I think, you know, um, just wanted to share a little bit more on the non-technical side. For me, it's a little bit more on the advocacy side. Um, <clears throat> to really share why web accessibility is really important and why we need it in the region, um, because it's almost non-existent here. So the first thing that I'll, I would like to talk about is, you know, screen readers or web accessibility is really beneficial for someone like Dixon or Gyang, who's not here today. Um, so, Gyang is uh, Grab's first blind coder, and um, Dixon is NUS School of Computing's first visually impaired student. Um, you know, we clearly can see why it will benefit them in terms of work and studies, but um, why will it benefit us who are not blind or visually impaired, right? And <clears throat> the, there's this concept that I would like to introduce, which is also called inclusive design, which is that when we design or build for the extreme, in, you know, in essence, we can design for more, because when we take reference from um, such different lives that they lead, uh, it leads to fresh experiences that we can build for our customers and uh, even more. So some of the examples that I have here, are, for example, I think voice UI is, is a really big one now. And you know the likes of Amazon and Apple and the rest have actually looked towards how blind people actually live their lives and interact with, with um, audio cues in order to come up with fresh experiences on that end. Um, GPS, on the other hand, um, maybe not so much the satellite imagery, but um, the user interface and how we get navigated, that was also pioneered by someone who was blind. Um, and lastly, of course, you know, OCR, optical character recognition, um, that benefits someone like Dixon when his professors just send out PDFs of scanned pages of textbooks that he can't read. 
um, OCR benefits him, but at the same time, we are also using it for a lot of you know, um, security applications as well. So um, just to give you a little bit of a snapshot of who does um, A11Y or, or accessibility, um, these are some of the companies up there. Um, Apple has been doing it for 27 years. Um, and OK, so if you, if you look at the, the first three rows, they're all not regional. They're not companies that they were started in the region. There's only one company right at the bottom, which is Grab, um, who was started in a region that actually focuses on accessibility. So how about all the other startups, um, the, especially the mature startups in the region? Are we looking at accessibility? If Dixon wants to buy groceries from Redmark, can he do that? You know, or Honest B, so on and so forth. Um, so that's what we wanted to, to encourage at the same time. So um, apart from companies, uh, if we look across geography, uh, geographical boundaries, um, in the EU, earlier last year, um, it was made a legislative mandate that all uh, governmental websites need to be web accessible. And because it was so successful, then they said, you know, why not let's just extend that to mobile apps as well for governmental services. And so that's the law of the land at the moment. Um, so in, oops, sorry, yep. And in, in the US, I think it's also a little bit of a, a different take. Um, something really interesting that, that um, I would like to share is in the US, if you're a person with a disability and you like a particular service but it's not web accessible to you, you can partner up with a lawyer to sue the company and the company cannot counter sue. They can only comply. Um, so this has been the story of how um, companies like Airbnb and the rest have um, you know, started on their accessibility journey. Um, about three months ago, blind people sued Match.com because they said we want to find love as well. Um, <clears throat> So that's, that's the level in which you know, there's, there's such support for web accessibility. Um, but how about in the Southeast Asian region? I think it is severely lacking. Um, if you go into the websites of any company that started in this region um, and you try to learn how to use a screen reader like Dixon does, you realize that for people with visual impairment, you can't access the information. And in an age where some people believe internet to be a, a basic human right, um, that's just not fair to them, right? So uh, what we've decided to do is essentially um, start a A11Y initiative in Southeast Asia um, where we are looking to get web developers across the region, starting in Singapore, um, who would express an interest to learn about web accessibility um, how to do the audits, how to do the, the, uh, the fixes for the accessibility bugs, and to comply with the, the global standards for uh, the web accessibility initiative. Um, so if this is something that you'd be interested in, essentially we would, you come in with zero experience, we teach you, you can take it back to your companies, but at the same time, we'll go a little bit rogue. We, we will form little teams and investigate and audit different companies and, and help them with their accessibility as well. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, you can come and speak to us. Um, and at the same time, um, with zero experience, if you want to learn how to do web accessibility, we're also having a workshop tomorrow at 1.30 if you want to join us. Um, <clears throat> and you know, we have lots of fun. So thank you.